Well guys, on this 6400, what we gotta do is I'm gonna rob a test port. <laughs> Things have gotten all screwed up this morning. I was, all my JCB parts are in. Well, I gotta call them too. I don't, I'm not seeing my damn torque converter. I found the charge pumps in here. All my clutch discs are in here. No charge pump. I don't understand. I gotta call maybe, <laughs> Maybe the ranch manager over there ordered these, but I didn't order, what is there, one, two, they're all the same number, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I didn't order 10 hydraulic filters for the transmission, I know that. So uh, I gotta call and ask them what the hell that's all about, but the torque converter's not there. I need to give them a call and see what's going on with that. But Okay, so what we need to do here, we've got an actual, the only thing that I'm finding wrong, I, I got to get a hold of the owner and make sure what he's that we're on the same page here. I don't know if he's talking about a harsh engagement with clutch modulation, is if it, or is he shuttle shifting with a loader on or something, and just putting it in gear. So what you can do is go through all these preliminary checks on this thing, and you can kind of do an operational check of the power quad transmission. Okay, so. <sighs> The first thing you want to do is check clutch modulation is slowly let it on the clutch forward and reverse and make sure that it comes on gradually and you can actually put a pressure gauge on there but there's no need to do that if it doesn't have a harsh engagement if you get halfway up and the thing just slams into gear then you've got a clutch modulation problem okay so the, the, the modulation problem that we're having is forward to reverse without using the clutch pedal these tractors don't have an actual they call it a clutch pedal but it's actually not a clutch all you're doing is dumping oil. That's all you're doing. There's no actual mechanical clutch on a power quad transmission. A lot of the old timers, I have a hell of a time getting that. They just can't seem to comprehend what I'm talking about. I'm not saying they're stupid, but don't. I just, you know, they're setting their ways and they don't know, they don't understand, they don't have a clutch on them. So it's kind of a comp. These are kind of a complicated way of doing things. There's. A lot of things in associated with this whole system, there's, uh, you've got to, I'll just kind of, just, I'll name some of the functions, <clears> or <throat> some of the components associated with this. You've got your forward reverse valve down on the transmission, on the valve housing. Okay, it runs a trigger valve. Trigger valve runs an engagement, over, it's got, it sends a pilot signal or something to an engagement override valve. Then there's an accumulator, then there's a, a sump dump valve, then there's a, I mean, there's a million things just to make that happen right there, you know, and it all has to work right. So what we need to do is get the oil warmed up in this thing and then uh, put a pressure gauge on. Let's see here. I'll show you real quick. We got to pull this plug out. I took some brake clean here. I'm going to pull this drive line out so I can get to things a little bit better. But we'll pull this plug out right here. And we'll put a test port in there. And we'll run a hose up into the cab. And that's what you do once you get the oil warmed up and then you start shuttle shifting and going back and forth. The pressure should gradually come up as it's modulating. If the pressure just ramps up and ramps back and forth really fast then you know you've got a valving problem somewhere in this front cover. But if it gradually comes up and it still harshly shifts, then more than likely you've got a clutch pack in the power quad that's, you've either got a, a piston that's not fully releasing quick enough, uh, something like that. First, another thing we can do before we even do that probably is just check, let's see, that's lube. This should be system pressure over here. I can't read it because it's got, grease all over it well pretty sure that's going to be system pressure port right there but we'll check that out let's get this drive line that's just hanging loose pull the drive line shields off of it uh, and pull the drive line out that way we can get the things up here in the front of the transmission a little bit better Okay, I've got this gauge hooked up to the system pressure port. Let's just check system pressure first. Uh, all right, what do we got here? Uh, 
good about it's hard to read that looks like about okay it's about 150 160 a thousand rpm is what you're supposed to check it at but We got 150, 160, 170, 170. It's supposed to be above 165. Okay, I think our system pressure is fine. So I think what we'll do now is we'll check our clutch modulation now. All right, guys, as you can see here, I've got it hooked up to the Ford reverse clutch modulation port on the power quad. So if I push the clutch in, put it in reverse or forward, if I go to forward, we got about system pressure right now, okay? So, so what you guy can do to check this is watch the needle as I go forward. should drop back down when I shift and it is that means it's modulating but it's modulating the pressure but it's hanging up you see how we got transmission creep I'm gonna pull it ahead. We're gonna be dumping the oil on it, pulling the suction screen out of it. So as you see, we pulled the suction screen out. We've got a problem. I'm trying to figure out what kind of if that's clutch material. It's just gone past the lining or what? Real thin, tinny-like stuff. A lot of it. Something's going on in there. Let's see that camera for a minute. We'll set this over here on the bench and then we'll show them up inside the where the actual I'm back up in here. Uh, it's just chock full of it back up in here. Metal. Let's see if I can dig some of that out. Huh. Well, definitely something going on here. You know you got a problem somewhere when you get that much material back in there. I guess we'll be, what we're gonna end up doing is tilting the cab. We'll pull this right rear tire off and we'll tilt the cab over and we'll pull the uh, drive line, pull the power quad out of it and tear the power quad transmission apart and see what's going on with it. Well, hello guys. Here we go step back and look, see what we got going on. I got the cab tilted up on the 6400. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Um, anyway, uh, getting ready to pull the power quad transmission out of it. Means we had all the metal and the oil and everything. Um, and I'll get you, I'll catch hell about it, but I got a chain holding the cab, holding the cab from going over center. But it'll hold it just fine. I've done it a hundred times. Um, and pull the fucking drive line. I want to explain something here. This is. I'm sure I'm going to get asked what kind of trans... Okay, power quad transmission. This is what they call compound planetary transmission. Okay, you're going to have multiple sun gears, 
um, on and off the planet assembly. You're going to have, this is the range transmission back here, okay? When you shift, see the Bowden cables here, the shift cables, this is what shifts your ranges, A, B, C, and D. And this is your four-speed power shift, basically, right here. So you're going to have your valve body right here. This is your valve body. This is the front cover. This is where the air pump is located up inside the front cover. It has a little camshaft in there that runs the air pump and the whole purpose of the air pump system on these tractors this that's what this line here is it pulls a, it actually it's, they call it an air pump it actually creates a vacuum is what it does because that's how you check them to see if they're pulling a vacuum what it does it creates a, diff, a pressure differential between the case halves that way the oil is continuously flowing between the case halves from the rear end housing all the way to the front of this transmission that way you're not getting the oil stagnated in one part of the one part of the tractor it's kind of the same principle that a scavenge pump on a cat works you know so um we got a lot of metal in there and we got some harsh engagement so we got to figure out what's going on here and it's got to be in the power shift uh these things are kind of notorious especially if guys use cheap oil if they use that yellow bucket oil and stuff like that over a length of time it was it'll delaminate the frictions on them too and it'll eat them so um we're going to find out, well, basically we'll pull the drive line, pull the hoses, pull the wires, any of the other lines, like these lines here are going back. This one here should be going back down towards the uh, mechanical front wheel drive, I think. Um, I mean, I got the clutch cable. He needs a new clutch cable too, this son I mean, that, that sucker is so damn stiff, you can't really, it almost takes two f feet to push on it. But um, I might just leave it alone and leave it on there and then... I'll have to back up and I'll just wrap a strap around. There's 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 two ways to do this. I mean, there's three ways. If you wanted to, you could pull the cab completely off. There's really no need. Sometimes I do. Like if I'm if I'm gonna be pulling all this stuff out here, I will. I'll just get it out of my way. I didn't do it here because I don't have enough room. This ceiling's not tall enough like it is down at the big shop. <clears throat> but here, especially by myself, you know, I had my, my helper with me, and we both just lifted. We basically grabbed it by the step. Me and, me and Blake just grabbed it by the step. We had a couple blocks there, and we blocked it up a little bit at a time, but we just lifted it up. And then once it got kind of halfway over center, Blake could hold it right here, and I went over there and put a prop under it and then got the chain tied around it and just chained it off. But doing that by yourself, now that's a different story, especially if you can't get your crane hooked to the top of it. So there's another way you can do this too. You can unbolt your drive line and all your hoses and wires, and you can undo it right back here, and basically roll the transmission and uh, the power shift and the range transitional state of the final drive housing, and you can just roll the whole powertrain right out between the frame rails and leave the back tires on it and just roll it all right back out the back end of it too. So that's another way you can do it, which uh 78 30s i've done those like that multiple times so just different ways of doing things just depends on you know it's you you don't ever do the same thing twice usually because there's different circumstances you know i'm i'm at my shop at home and the ceiling's not as high so i can't get my crane i can as high as i want to for the cab lift you know but i can definitely get my crane once i get everything off here i'll back in here with my truck and stretch out with the crane here and i'll just grab this power claw and we'll just pull it out and set it down here behind the tractor and we'll have to go give her a good old wash job and then we'll tear it apart adapter there with it. Yeah. Okay. 
kind of nasty looking crap. You don't look so good. Alright, let me go find a comb socket or maybe a 18 millimeter inner inch. spot you can get that impact wrench in that's about it put my flywheel in it is it is 17 millimeter that's what I thought I thought I remembered that being 17 millimeter I can't kick at some of these guys. I was sitting there reading the comments on that one we were doing air compressor, and this guy goes, I'm unsubscribing. Your videos, this camera movement makes me want to puke. But I'll watch the other stuff because I get a laugh out, or something like that. I was going, these people are unbelievable. <laughs> He's having a rough day. That camera's just going to make him puke. Boy, it must be rough. Must be rough. Such a hard, hard life he's got, you know. Boy, it's tough. And there, it finally came out of there. Feel good in it. Well, you can do is just if you want, sometimes just take the plans and just pop the <coughs> just pop that out of there. It's just splined in there. Sometimes these will get quite a bit of wear on them too, but this one don't look bad at all. But if the seal ride gets a groove worn in it right here, just replace it and change it out. Yeah, we got a lot of irons in the fire. We gotta work on this for a while. I probably won't even get it out and I gotta go go to Merrill and get my parts. I got a 7520 in it. The piston pump back here snapped the shaft off in it. So I got it all torn apart out of the feed lot. And I gotta go get it. I gotta pull these wires off of here. Actually, you know what? I thought there was a little jumper harness that unplugged over here. I'll have to look at that. I can't remember. Gotta pull and see what lines I need to pull off here.
strap to absorb one, damn it. Damn it! Get the same size strap. Oh, I got the same length strap here. Yeah, because we're going to have to come out a little ways to get it, you know, separated. <laughs> I just lost it.
probably got her pretty good there. Yeah, I ought to come out of there now. That's good. You want to get it. Now let's go real slow and try to extend out and go down. Go out a little ways and then go down. Now go out some more. Down. More. We're almost clear. Go more. Yeah, PTO shaft. Do what I should have done. I should have pulled a PTO shaft out of it. I forgot all about it. of a rag and it's leaking all right folks so there is the power pod out of there i got a feeling back here this is our brake housing back here more than likely the problem is going to be back here the back end it might be in the clutch back housing but i think the brake housing is where the problem is going to be what do we got here let me shine a light Look in here, see if we have any issues going on. Usually don't have too many troubles back here in the range transmissions. These synchro transmissions are pretty full, pretty bulletproof. 